Well, uh, I'm getting a little fed up with my computer here because I've been making these videos and the video files end up being corrupt. I don't know what's really causing it. Um, it might be a screencast o matic thing. Uh, but anyways, it might be time to get a new computer to do these recordings. Maybe. Um, so, this is an iPad Pro 10.5. Um, I actually replaced the, the TriStar on it. Um, so I made a big video about that. And talked about a few things. Uh, what's been going on for the past few months here. And um, I guess I'll just recap it in this video since uh, everything's all, you know, first video is all jacked up. But basically, we moved. Uh, we moved from Chantilly, Virginia, which is where I used to live, um, to, Al to Alex Old Town, Alexandria, Virginia, which is where I currently live. Um, and so the commute for me was about an hour each way, <laughs> which really sucked. Uh, but now the commute is probably closer to like 12 minutes, uh, 15 to 20 minutes on bike, which, uh, which has been great. Um, I've really been enjoying biking and I've only done it a few times, but uh, it's pretty nice. You know, it gets my exercise in um, before and after I start, start before I start the day and after I end the day, which, uh, which is great. Um, yeah, it's nice to be able to roll out of bed and just get to work, you know. Instead of thinking about that stupid long commute, which I don't know how people do it, <laughs> it's one of the reasons why I quit my job actually back in the days, because um, I didn't want to sit through traffic in in a cubicle for eight to nine hours a day anymore. It was driving me nuts. Um, even though now I kind of sit here and do micro soldering uh, for a long for long hours, but um, I you know I can take breaks whenever I want. But anyways, I, I'm loving Old Town, Alexandria. It's kind of where I grew up, and um, so it's nice to be back here. Actually, I mean, probably never in a million years would I have um, thought that I would have an office in Old Town, Alexandria, and you know, work so close to where I grew up. But um, but uh, the transition was fairly smooth, and uh, no issues. Um, okay, so let's get back. Let's get to this repair. So I replaced the TriStar on this, and I'll just recap what I did. Basically, if you don't have one of these suckers, get one. It's a TriStar tester. Um, it's about 145 bucks. It'll save you fucking many hours of troubleshoot. Not many hours, but it'll save you a lot of time. And it's great because uh, basically the TriStar tester says that TriStar is good. It's almost always good, so you don't have to replace it. You know, a lot of times back in the back in the days, a long time ago, uh, people would just replace TriStar just for the hell of it because they don't know what the hell else is wrong with it. You know, but with this thing, if it's good, it's good. And if it's bad, you know, we've, we've had some mixed results with it. You know, some some shorts uh, detect as bad or whatever. Um, but basically, um, for the most part, if it says PP5B0 passes, everything else fails. It's almost always TriStar. Um, if, let's see, what else? If, um, if it, uh, a lot of times we've seen E underscore ACC1 is failed. Uh, that's also a bad TriStar. Um, and then, you know, it also tells you if the dock connector is bad or not. So you can plug this in and say, oh, the dock connector failed. So you can start troubleshooting that first. Um, uh, yeah, so this thing's great. 145 bucks. Do it. Don't even think twice about it. I think JC, I think there's actually another one out there now. JC, I think JC, you know, the home button makers uh, have one out there now. It's like 200 bucks. Um, but I I've never used that, so... Okay, so let's get back to this thing. So I fixed the TriStar on it, plugged, plugged the screen in, and the screen is, um, it's got spotlights on the bottom of it. And so for these iPad Pros, the usual culprit, um, the usual culprit is the diode. These two diodes right here. Uh, I'll, let me just go to the small screen. So these two, there's two, di two backlight diodes here, boom and boom. And they look perfectly fine. You can't even... No, nothing wrong with either of them, right? But just diode mode them. You had to, so when you're diode moding um, diodes, you should get OL in one direction and a reading of something less than, well, usually less than 0.7 in, in the other direction. Okay, so for this one, is is testing 0.158 in one direction and OL in another direction, okay? Um, 
anyways, you, you really want to get to each side of it because they're not ground. So you want to get to each side of it. Test it. Oh well, okay. And then this one tests, um, sorry, tight on space here. This one tests OL one direction and 1.5 volts in the other direction, 2 volts in the other direction, which tells me that this one suckers bad. So, uh, so I'm going to remove it actually. Um, even though it looks perfectly fine, and you know, maybe people get trolled by it or whatever, but uh, diode mode is your best friend, so use it wisely. So, okay, so let's see. So just remember that the lines are on on the top side here. I talked about preserving my tips in other radio too, which I'll, maybe I'll get to in another another time. But I started using this knife tip, which has been awesome. The C105112, and then I also lowered the temperature on my I lowered the temperature on my. Uh, JBC, which is also preserving tip life. Okay, so for the backlight diode, um, I'm using a 40 volt 1 amp, pretty standard. It's a pretty standard um, diode, which is what I've been using for basically all of my backlight repairs on all the iPad Pros. And if you want to find, if you want to know which one it is, just go, just go to microsoldering.com, click on. Uh, Common components or parts and supplies, and then common components. And I have a link to DigiKey um, and where to buy it. So I just got like a ton of these things because these backlights have actually been blowing pretty rapidly. Um, so we do a lot of these repairs, and I've seen we've seen quite a bit of TriStars too, actually. Um, but these aren't. I don't know if these are exact match, you know, but uh, the one, the 40 volt one amp seem to work pretty well. You just have to make sure you, you know you find the right package for them. And so this one's a little bit bigger, but it'll work. Um, yeah, I, I don't. Maybe this is too big. Uh, yeah, maybe this is too big. <laughs> okay, let me just rotate this mother. Oh, I'm so lazy. Right, I think that should be fine. All right, not a whole lot to that. Um, so let's remove the old diode. I think I could probably use a smaller package one, uh, but I have to look at. I think the iPad Air diode you can probably use that, which is the same as the Mini. So that, that should work as well if you have some in stock. Okay, so before I bend it back, bend the frame back and uh and seal it, you know, seal it back up, test it, whatever, I'm gonna just diode mode it again. Make sure I'm getting the right diode mode. Now I'm getting point one five in one direction and Oh well, in the other direction. So I know this is good now. Let's put it back, and make sure we don't see any spotlights, and then close this mother up. Call it a day, all right? So let me pause it real quick. Well, as you can see here, there's no more spotlights back here, down here. So we are back in business. Um, and that's it, really. Not a whole lot to this. I need to get my camera set up a little bit better because uh, it's just clipped onto my fume extractor right now. Um, anyways, we're back in business, so backlight repair, iPad Pro 10.5, uh, almost always the diode, alright, uh, thanks for watching. I'll, I'm going to be back with more videos, um, yeah, I'm going to be back with more videos now that, I, now that I'm situated in a new place, and uh, um, anyways, I'll be back, and I'll talk a little bit more about micro-soldering. 
uh, industry and everything in general. All right. Uh, thanks. Bye. So I just wanted to say thank you for watching this channel, and I wanted to promote our online micro soldering course. Um, we have it hosted at Udemy.com, and it's at this point it's four hours of video instruction. Um, the reviews are pretty good, um, and we talk about everything from the basics. Uh, of, of an iPhone logic board um, and then we have a section on ZXW tools um, we have a little section about how to set up your hot air rework station your micro soldering um, station and how to use diode mode uh, the third part is the three most common repairs which is no touch no backlight no charge and the fourth part is all about data recovery so um, if you go through our website, it's a hundred bucks. And some people say that learning online is not the best way of doing things, or you can't learn micro soldering online. I beg to differ. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I started watching YouTube videos when I first started about three years ago, and that's how I learned it. Um, and not only that, but you know, you go to a live course. Some people like live courses, but not everybody has. Three thousand dollars to spend on a live course, right? So, um, and then yes, you're right. You can go to YouTube and watch all these videos, um, but you're not gonna. When people make these videos, they don't go from A to Z. They usually start from somewhere in the middle because they assume that you watched something earlier on, or one of their earlier videos. So this course is all-encompassing. It has everything from A to Z. Um, to help you get started in micro soldering and we are adding stuff um, on a weekly maybe monthly basis and we're, we're gonna just gonna keep adding to this thing and um, so if you want to get started just I mean you can also take a class but uh, you know to get your feet wet I think this is the best thing to do right here and I vouch for it um, thanks for watching the video I was also gonna say um, in order to buy it with a discount, $50 discount, just go to microsoldering.com, click on store, and then it's going to be the first item on here. You click on buy at Udemy and that will give you the $50 off. Thanks.